Hello, welcome to Skull RPG Podcast. My name is Dwight Skull. My name is Jacob Skull. And today we're going to teach you how to tell, tell your, your story. story. So we've already allu- alluded to this a little oh. bit, but this is the like timed combat or timed something until something goes down that's bad kind of <laughs> idea. Okay. Let me explain that then. So one of the ways to ramp up suspense in your game is to... Now, there's two ways to do it. I'm going to give you the way you don't want to do it first. Mm -hmm. Is to pull out a stopwatch or an alarm clock and put it on the counter and say, okay, you have five minutes to get out of this dungeon or you all die. Well, the problem with that, as we all know, is as soon as you enter into anything that even resembles initiatives or light combat, you don't have five actual minutes anymore. Because um, no matter what game you're playing... Um, they break time down differently. And so each round could be anywhere from one second to 10 seconds of real time. Mm -hmm. Well, the problem is by the time four of us take one second of real time or, I mean, of of game time or 10 seconds of game time. It's 20 minutes. It's 20 minutes. And so your five-minute counter, everyone's died, the, the place is flooded. But in reality, nothing's yet happened. So what I like to do instead is do it by round. And so why you want to do this, just to explain it, is it's honestly, okay, if you've played any video game whatsoever and you, and they do this in television shows too, it's such a trope thing to do, okay? You kill the big bad, but the big bad on their way out, they hit the self-destruct switch for the secret base. And now the secret base is coming down in pieces all around the characters as they're running for their lives because the big bad's like, well, I'm going to take you with me. And they have a certain amount of time. Now, in a platform, I can't even tell you how many platform games I played where there was some sort of counter where you had like three minutes to get out. And you were fighting stuff all the way through. And so you just had to like not fight everything. You just had to keep running. And yeah, you get shot in the back and you take damage, but that's better than blowing up. Well, you can do that same thing in a role-playing game. But... Don't do it with an actual counter because real time and game time are not... It's like going through the wardrobe of the Chronicle of Narnia. One is like hundreds of years to a minute. Mm. (laughs) It's totally different. Yeah. It's that whole meme that says, you know, 20 second combat took three hours... Six weeks of walking through the through the uh, the forest took two minutes. You know, yeah. it's the same thing there. And so movies have that same issue because, like, how many times did the it's the fight montage that or how many times was the Enterprise going to blow up? In oh, a minute, and they talk for five minutes. No, it's not that bad, but I I actually next time watch if you're watching the old school Star Trek, and Scotty says, "Catch me have forty five seconds." Time how long they argue with each other because you'll get some really interesting fun out of that. Because it's about a minute and 20. And then they decide to do something. And then it takes 30 seconds after that. And anyway. So here's your fun part. What you want to do instead is leave everybody in initiatives. Okay? And if you're going to do some sort of dramatic thing where they have to leave before the building explodes, um, then I leave everybody in initiatives the entire time. And so what I'll do is I'll give them, and I'll give them some crazy amount of time. Like, I'll figure it out, like, okay, maybe they have 10 minutes of game time to get out. So I'll take 10 minutes, I'll figure out what my system uses for a round equals how many seconds. Basically what I do is I find out how many rounds are in a minute. I multiply that by 10 in this case, and that's how many I have. And so that's what I would do. And then I literally just have a, probably a D100 counter, and every time... We start at the top of the initiative track. I flip Mm -hmm. it to the next number down. And that gives everybody the suspense of, if we don't get out of here, something bad is going to happen. Now, there's another way to do it. You can um, do the same thing in, uh, not in a round, but in a shorter amount of time. Like, well, longer than a round, for instance. Longer than 100 rounds. Longer than 800 rounds. Um, You can do this in a stance of, Okay, so and so has been kidnapped, and they're gonna get killed if you don't deliver the money or the magic relic or whatever it is on, well, let's say Wednesday. Mm-hmm. You tell the players it's Monday, okay, and they have until sundown on Wednesday to drop that item off in the hollowed oak outside of town, the one that everyone knows about, and 
how you're measuring time is really simple. Because once the wizards start to, once the wizard or the cleric say, okay, I need more spells, you're now setting the time. And I would literally do that because a cleric or any of the divines have to tell you they should have declared it at the beginning. No one ever does this, though. So you ask them, do you do your spells in the morning, at sunrise, or at night, at sundown? Mm-hmm. And what you do is, once they, you keep asking them, do you want to stop and rest and recharge your spells? Once they say yes, you now can take off a full day. And now they only have two days left to do it. So that really helps get the thing down. Now, when maybe Wednesday afternoon, if there's a lot of stuff happening, I might now break it down into you have 100 rounds now before that happens, and now you're in this big bad fight to get whatever. So that's exactly kind of how I break the whole round thing down, and it Mm -hmm. adds a lot of suspense in general to it which is actually why I use it. Um, You can also use it in another way. Um, So this is another trope. You are holed up, and you're being like wave after wave after wave of something is hitting you. So think um, Helm's Deep, the movie, because there was no, in the books, the humans just dealt. Uh, But in the movie, Gandalf shows up with all the elves, and they, you know, yay. And so Helm's Deep is a great example of, in the movies anyway, of like, how do I hold? Hold until help arrives, or you got to hold this until... I mean, there's several missions that are like that way. Oh, hey, you got to cover me while I, def- while I open up this door. Yeah, it could even be that, right? Where you could, it could even be a small thing. It doesn't have to be this large thing. That's a really mm-hmm. good call out. Where you, um, okay, so the rogue's got to get across this trapped room and open the door, but on the behind you is literally just wave after wave after wave of goblins like it, as the dm you don't even care you just keep throwing them out there how many goblins are there you can't tell um okay and you just keep having them come at them until there's like a body stack of them and things like that are also good to help whittle away your your player characters resources to make fights a little bit more dire and a little bit more dramatic for them as well yeah, if at any time, and this is the real problem, if at any time your wizard can just pull out of combat and take the party with them into a dimension with a rope trick spell, for an example, and then just decide, I'm just going to rest here for the prerequisite time to the end of the day, and you let them get away with that, then, in my opinion, you've kind of failed as a game master. Let me tell mm-hmm. you why. Because typically what happens is, if you really want to get serious about it, that spell is only lasts one hour a level. You need eight hours of sleep. Uh, Most characters do, unless they're a certain race that doesn't need it or they get a certain uh, item that allows it not to be. And if they're they're fatigued, fatigue always works in your favor. You can always work toward fatigue. But if they decide that they're in a dungeon, they decide to hole up for the time, well, they've only adventured for three hours. It's only 10 a.m. So if you want to use your spell and hole up for eight hours, fine by me, but you haven't gained your spells back. Mm-hmm. That happens tomorrow. Right? Or whatever, this, especially for the clerics and the, of the world. They, they don't get spells every eight hours. And neither do the wizards, technically. So you can really just, if they're going to start to do that to you, really look into the rules of how their spells actually regenerate and make sure that you prevent them from being able to easily regenerate their spells mm-hmm. at any time they want. And so one of the functions is keep track of the time of day as you're going through and let them know, oh, if you're going to rest for eight hours, that's fine. So you're going to pop out at around dinner time. What are you going to do then? Oh, and now you're down to spell. Specifically the spell you want to rest for. You want to use to rest tonight. Mm-hmm. So who's the guard tonight when you guys go sleep? What's that look like? Or what you do is you just exactly what Jacob was saying. You start throwing horde after horde after horde at them just, that are small. Just whittling them down. So when they do actually get to the big bad boss fight, which is what you want to do this with, they don't show up fully rested, fully healed, full spell complimentary. They show up weakened, bloodied, bruised, not half health or anything, but the wizard can't just start casting his like seven big spells because he's used four of them. Yeah, the idea is to get your your party down to... Maybe the highest they have is a second or third level spell if they're low enough. And, or, they've, or they realize that this is how you play your game and they don't always just go to their big bad spell the first time, the first mm-hmm. encounter. They're 
conserving it because they know who you are. Really, it really stops some of the penis things of wizard opens the door, fireballs, sure. rest for eight hours. Wizard opens the next door, fireballs, fireball. right. rest for eight hours. Exactly. So by putting some sort of time limit on how they how how fast they have to get through a dungeon, you stop that. Mm-hmm. By even putting in little things where they're being chased by something, and the you know the thief is now out of the combat because the thief is. Checking for traps across the room, disabling traps to get across the room, checking the door, finding it's trapped and locked, has to do all these things. Well, these are just combat initiatives that, you know, every every turn, the thief has to do a, a roll. And the thief can't just take 20, because that's 20 rounds. So unless, the, unless everyone's fine with the thief taking 20 on every 5-foot step in a 40-foot room and holding that door for hours... Mm-hmm. Then it's going to go quicker than that, and the thief might... The thief might discover some traps the way you, like, discover a Lego at 2 in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> and so. the other fun thing is is if you're having one of the groups break off for a little bit, yep. you could throw weaker enemies than you normally would at them because, oh, hey, level 1 goblins running at you. Might not be a bad, might not be a huge deal for three fight, for three melee things, but for two with two spellcasters... It could be, it and if you had enough kill. of them, if you had enough of them, I mean that's just it. I you could you could just sum it up the never ending spring of yeah. monsters, and and, and now the agency is on that uh, is on the road to get through to help his well, guys out. You know the one thing that you could look at is um, so it's Lord of the Rings with them uh, with the Balrog at the end actually mm-hmm. with them running through the tomb because when they finally woke everything up, every goblin and their mother. Millions of them apparently just came out of the woodwork. Can they fight the goblins? Sure, they can, but in reality, they have to fight enough to get out to run for their lives. Mm-hmm. And then, in so doing, in so doing, then they meet one of them meets their end. And this is a great way to have uh, suspense and stuff in your campaigns. Is you know sometimes yeah, you're the biggest baddest thing on the planet, but there's a hundred million of these things. So mm-hmm. what are you gonna do? And you know if you can just get across. This one bridge, you could sever the bridge and leave them on the other side of the chasm, which buys you the time you need. So, again, think back to movies and video games where they've used time as a great way to build and maintain suspense and do the same in your games. Mm -hmm. Hey, thanks for listening. And for more resources, please go to SkullRPG.com.